Oregon's got a new commitment at wide receiver, and one of their current commits is being courted elsewhere. Here we go. You are Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Oregon Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, it is that time once again for Locked On Ducks. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view of the day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, and your number one source to stay up to date with the Ducks. If you have not already, like, comment, subscribe, rate, and review, please, and thank you wherever you listen to or watch this show, which today is brought to you by our friends at Monopoly Go. I have a competitive side, and it's a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends, download Monopoly Go now, free on the App Store or Google Play. Brian Smith, our Locked On Recruiting Insider, is here with me today, brought to you as always by our friends at uh, LinkedIn Jobs. Let, let's start with the not, not bad news yet. It's somewhat normal standard operating procedure, but Oregon five-star wideout Dallas Wilson has reportedly been getting interest from other schools what have you heard brian uh when you say been getting interest like or i mean nothing ever changed once he committed to Oregon. he's been constantly visiting schools since so that's a kid that's just going to be a signing day deal right off the bat um tampa bay tech it's a major program miami florida florida state georgia everybody's after him I don't know where he's going to go. Originally, I kind of thought Miami would be able to flip him, but they think it's going to be hard to get him away from Oregon. Uh, he grew up a fan, uh, likes the uniforms. There's a surprise. But Florida kids just don't typically end up following through with it. They do get some. I just think they got to hit a home run on his official visit, and they got to get him back probably for an unofficial as well in the fall. So I don't know what his schedule will be. It changes constantly. Uh, but Dallas is one of the best players in the country, regardless of his position. Love his film, love him live. There's nothing you can't say about him that he can't do on a football field. So, great player. Yeah, when, when you have a guy like this, I mean, first of all, I think it's a testament to what Oregon has built, that you have a kid from Florida who grew up there, and he's like, yeah, I grew up in an Oregon fan, and he's in, what is it, T Tampa, Florida, right? That, that, that part of the country. Does it factor in at all when you know his recruitment is going to be dragged out for a while and he's going to have schools that are are, are going to try and flip his uh, verbal commitment from, from the Ducks? Do, does the geography play a major factor there? It depends, but like uh, single moms in particular don't like the distance thing. That's, that's something you can't fix, um, but like Auburn's in on him, et cetera. Everybody's trying to get him to visit. And sometimes that'll play a role, especially later on, once they realize, oh, wow, I'm going to be leaving for the next four years or whatever it is, and I'm not going to be around at all. I'm not going to see family. It happens usually a little later in the process. When you commit as a junior or whatever it was, when you committed as a sophomore, I think technically, you don't think about it because it's not tangible. It's getting close to tangible. We'll see if that changes in the fall, but right now I doubt he even thinks about it. These Florida kids think 15 minutes ahead. That's the, it's just a different world down there. And uh, I know him. He's a good kid, but he's got everybody after him, man. He can pick his school. He is elite. So maybe that'll factor in at the end. But right now, I think Oregon just needs to recruit him. Yeah, he, he's one of three wide receiver commits that Oregon has in the 2025 cycle. And, and of course, the, the Decorian and Moore efforts, as I understand it, will continue another guy who you know verbally committed to lsu five-star receiver but oregon's kind of on the other end of that situation where they're trying to flip him and trying to you know continue courting him and getting him on campus and, and all that sort of stuff but i say third receiver because oregon did recently pick up a commitment from isaiah mosey out of uh, the missouri area what are your impressions of him the best comparison that I could give for his style of play and seeing him live and seeing his film would be Chris Olave. It played at Ohio state. It's now with the saints, just the style. I'm not saying he's Chris, but I mean like their, their body type and everything really good in the slot could be a guy that could play outside eventually, like be, get strong enough, but he really changes his body motion in midair. you will stop and start, make guys miss turn around, which all these things, Olave, he did at Ohio state. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with seeing this kid. Him and Wilson were two of the best guys I saw last year at the Future 50 event down in Bradenton at IMG. They went against elite guys and did really well. Uh, if you could get both those guys in the same class, you'd be you'd be ahead of the curve because you can only double one guy, and that's probably going to be Dallas. So you would always have 
another guy that's really, really talented, single cover. Yeah, well, one thing that I, I thought about is, you know, he, he's from – the state uh, of Missouri. And I wanted your insights kind of on the high school football scene there, because guys can put, you know, really impressive film on tape. But, you know, even when it's in the state of Oregon, for instance, as you know, you're not always going up against the highest level of competition. You don't always have a division one or a power five player on the other side. What what sort of competition level has Mosey gone up against and will he go up against in his senior year with, uh, with at least some at North High School? He basically lives in Kansas City. Um, that's the, that's the same high school that Lanning used to work at. Yeah. So he, you know, he knows his, his dad who was there at the time. And so like, he know, it's a family friend. So it's not shocking that they got him, but going into the recruitment, you're looking at a kid, like, how do we grade this guy? There's some pretty good talent in the Kansas city area. It's not Miami. It's not Dallas, but it's still pretty good. And watching the film, there are kids that can run. He's not just running away from guys after three steps. So he's having to make an effort. And I think it's a little bit of an underrated state. Uh, Columbia, where University of Missouri is at, is St. Louis and Kansas City, all three of those got players. So I, I think it's a pretty good state. It's just not talked about that much for some reason. Yeah, and, you know, Oregon has gone after players from Missouri before. I don't think it's specifically because, you know, Lanning ha has ties there, having attended William Jewell College. But I, I do think that's a state that – can produce some solid talent. We've seen that over the last couple of years. And, and Mosey's clearly one of those guys. He had Alabama after him. He had Auburn after him. Arkansas was, was in the mix. Missouri was in the mix. How good of a sign is it for Oregon on the trail that they were able to get his commitment over those schools when he's essentially in the heart of SEC country? I think it's a great sign. If you're going to be an SEC defense like Dan wants, you got to recruit SEC players. If you want to compete at the highest level and compete for titles, you got to recruit SEC level receivers. It's that it's the same thing over and over again. You go where the best talent is. Like Georgia is now recruiting the state of Missouri. Georgia. So what does that tell you? I mean, they're their top five to eight players in the state each year are really good. So getting a kid from there and like culturally, Georgia and Oregon have nothing in common. So they're they're doing the right things. Uh, the kids just want to go to Oregon. So Dan's doing a great job with his staff and they all work together to even get the kids on campus. Cause a lot of them probably couldn't pick Oregon out on a map to be really like, dead serious. They probably, yeah. Could. Well, Hey, knowing where all 50 States are, I think it's something I could do. I might struggle a little bit with the Northeast and all the, the that, small that's States. The yeah. The that's that. Yeah. That's definitely, definitely the hard, the, the Vermont's and the new Hampshire's, you know, which one goes up, which one goes down and those little, you know, Crescent V's or, or whatever you want to call them. But uh, last thing on, on Mosey that I've got for you here, Brian, is he a guy that can play uh, as a true freshman, or is he someone who probably comes in in 2025, red shirts for a year, and, and then has the ability to have a starting capable role? It depends on their depth chart and how they want to do rotation. Everybody's got a different deal with this. Uh, I know like Notre Dame's receiver coach wants a six-man rotation. Most teams want seven or eight. It just depends on the coach. And then the other thing is it's easier for freshmen to play slot because strength is not as big a deal because you're off the line and you're not getting beaten up as much in bump coverage. So who's the slot receiver and what's the depth chart like? And second year, I'd be shocked if he wasn't a major contributor because he's A, talented, and B, he'd have a year in Oregon's strength and conditioning program. He'd be a little more versatile in those playbook. So my guess is he'd play in three or four games minimum. And if he learns the playbook fast enough, he might be a guy by the end of the year that could get really deep into the rotation. Yeah, I think Oregon's receiver room is going to have a lot of change in, in 2024, especially if Evan Stewart goes to the NFL, which – I think you and I both expect yeah. him to, you know, assuming he has, I think, just a good year. He's just such a physically gifted guy. But that would leave Oregon without its projected top four receivers from this season because you'd have Evan Stewart gone, Tess Johnson gone, Treshawn Holden, Gary Bryant. So you could have a lot of turnover there. And, and certainly Oregon's got good receivers in the 2024 class as well. Ryan Pelham and Jeremiah McClellan, uh, amongst others. Dylan Gresham is a guy who I, I think has turned a couple of heads in uh, in spring ball. So I think that's going to be a really, really intriguing offseason uh, position group to monitor for Oregon next year. And Mosey will certainly be in the mix. This recruiting class so far, just six commits into it in 2025, is very offensively heavy. Five guys on the offensive side of the ball, only one on defense. We know that that is not going to last. 
First, this episode of Locked on Ducks is brought to you by our friends at Monopoly Go. I've been told that I'm a competitive person. I bet Brian is a competitive person as well. You just, you give that sort of vibe, Brian. I'm just guessing here, but I think I might be right. We all do. And my competitive side's a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times, including right here on this mobile device that I have in my possession. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part, is messing with your friends. You can charge them rent on iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly, but you can also heist their vaults of riches for yourself. It's not just a competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends as well and earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. This episode also brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance superchargers roof racks exhaust kits led headlights and more whether you're into speed power or style ebay motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die you'll always find exactly what you're looking for and with ebay guaranteed fit your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to make your car the mvp and bring home huge wins keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers so thus far in 2025 this has been an offensively heavy class that of course is not going to remain but is that just kind of the way the chips have fallen so far, Brian? Like, I, I don't expect, you know, when you've got five or six commits around the offensive side of the ball, I don't expect this to suddenly be a defensive light class for, for Dan Lanning and company. I don't think Dan's built that way mentally. He wants to have balance. Uh, Kirby taught him that. Nick's taught him that, et cetera. I, I think he knows that. When you get commitments, though, has nothing to do with your plan. Believe me, that's one thing that drives coaches crazy. They have no control over it, especially the elite kids. Uh, Off-the-record conversations about that are not ones that can be aired here for a lot of the cuss words, but these kids are going to commit when they want to do it. Maybe it's five in a row, it's defense next. There's no talent, but I would be surprised if they don't get eight, eight to nine kids anyway that are defensive players in this class conservatively. If you don't recruit defense consistently, you will not beat the Georgias, the Alabamas, the Florida States, Ohio States in the playoff. Dan's well aware. Yeah, and you know, Oregon is having a couple of high profile visitors this weekend, not spring game weekend. I'm sure that would have been a preferred part of the game plan here, but a couple of names for Oregon fans to be aware of as the 2025 class, you know, starts to kick into gear. And I talked recently on the show about how it felt like once they, you know, got Rashad samples in place, that was going to kick up the recruiting momentum. They've got Cooper Perry. Now they've got Isaiah Mosey committed uh, as well as you know, May and April really roll along. Of course, April comes first for those of us who remember our months. Apparently, I do not. If if you look at where Oregon is at recruiting wise and the, the visitors they're bringing in, I, I definitely expect the number of commits to to continue to roll in, in in the coming weeks, depending on individual timelines, of course. But a couple names uh, to know. Let's start with uh, a Trey McNutt, a five star safety. He's going to be on campus this weekend. That's a really good football player. Uh, to put it in perspective, for those who don't know. He's from the northern Ohio area, plays at a prominent program, and guess who's going after him hard? Ohio Georgia. State. Oh, Ohio, yeah. Yeah, that, well, he's got – I'll go back to sleep now. Okay, well, that's fine. But the point is still the same. Like, Ohio State, their DB class this year is one of the greatest ones I've ever seen, and they're still going after this kid. That puts things in perspective. Um, they have arguably the top two corners in the nation committed. They've got a good safety, et cetera. And McNutt is like – Here's the final piece to the puzzle kind of deal. He's one of those guys. He could play nickel. He could probably play corner. And he could definitely play safety. Those versatile chess pieces. Dan, with his defense, he likes to move some things around. This is a kid that can play multiple roles as he gains, you know, knowledge of a playbook. And he's probably got NFL ability just to be blunt. I don't really want to pigeonhole him, though, and just say, oh, he's just a safety. He's better than just a safety. You could put him at running back, and he would figure it out. I'll take those athletes every day of the week, and I'm going to speak for Dan and guess that he would too. Yeah, I mean, they were always my favorite players to recruit on NCAA 14 because you could just put them anywhere that you wanted to, essentially, including but not limited to uh, a quarterback. One more thing on, on him is, 
you know, he's from the Ohio area. Ohio State's going after him. Is there a chance that that game at Autzen Stadium, Ducks and Buckeyes, does it does that play a role oh, in a kid's like thinking when, when he's considering, you know, this program or that program? There are three states where the fan bases are just completely blind. Louisiana, Alabama, and Ohio. People in Ohio, like it's brainwashed. That is a cult. And he's been, I, I'm being, it's ridiculous. I grew up in Indiana. I'm very, very well aware of this. He's going to be told Ohio State's going to kill him by every, if, they're, if they are underdogs by 30, Ohio State fans still think they'll win by 30. It's just, so if Oregon wins that game, it'll carry more weight for him in that state than it would in a lot of others. They just, it's just what he's surrounded with. So I think this is an exception to the rule where it would. A lot of times these, oh, they beat him. They're going to get the recruit. No, it's about relationships, but it could open his eyes. Like if Oregon put a whipping on him, beat him like 31 to 17, I have no idea. That's going to carry weight because like this is their first year in the Big Ten. All their eyes and on all the media guys like me are going to be like, okay, let's see how you handle the travel and all these big games. If they go like 11 and one or something, make the playoff. Yeah, they absolutely will. Yeah, I had a bold prediction on the show recently from a, a listener that it would look the same way that the Oregon Utah game did last year, which I would I would love to see. Of course, don't anticipate thirty five to six, even though the game's at Autzen Stadium. I don't see us holding Ohio State to without a touchdown. Uh, when yeah, like I said, it was a bold prediction, but you know what? If you told me we were going to go into Utah, even with Bryson Barnes there and win 35 to six, I would have said, mm, I don't know. I picked Oregon to win and cover the six and a half, but I thought Utah might score uh, at least a, a touchdown or two. But McNutt is not the only high profile safety that Oregon is going after. And I think with, you know, where their safety room is at this year and, you know, Tysheem Johnson is in his final year of eligibility. Kobe Savage, I think, might have a, a one more year, but you know that that's kind of a thin position. We'll kind of get back to that in, in the transfer portal sense later in the show. But clearly, Oregon is seeking safety commits in this 2025 cycle because they're also going after a guy we've talked about here on, on the show before in five-star DJ Pickett. Pickett is as rare as it gets, brother. Uh, that's the kid I know well. Grew up in Tampa, where I lived for a long time. I think he can play corner, even though he's six four plus. He's the rare kid, but again, he's a chess piece. DJ doesn't care. I've talked to him about it many. He doesn't care what spot he plays. He just wants to play. Uh, he would actually like the ball to come his direction. He's the hardest kid in America to film because nobody will throw the ball towards him. Um, no, seriously, I've, I've filmed whole games and not gotten a clip. It's really aggravating. <laughs> so I joke with him about it, and he just smiles because he's a quiet guy. But anyway, if they could get him, they can do whatever the hell they want because then teams got to worry about him on the back end. His burst for a six four kid is insane. And if you want to put him at boundary, if you want to put him up to the field, whatever, he's a solid tackler too. Yeah, that's that's a dude. So uh, he's my favorite all around DB recruit that I've ever scouted. Yeah, is he? You know, it, it, he's visiting Oregon this weekend, obviously, as I mentioned. But how good of a chance do you feel Oregon has? to land him? What other schools are, are in the mix? LSU and Miami are considered the top of the board right now. I'm going to put a, uh, an asterisk by LSU for a second. I'll come back to that. Miami, he went to recently. They're after him. His cousin, Booker Pickett, just signed there. They're pretty good friends. I mean, Mario Cristobal is Oregon fans know it can recruit. It's closer to home. He's got family ties there, etc. But Oregon's kind of the wild card. He really liked his visit. I know that. Um, they're going to get him on campus again, and they need help in the secondary to kind of keep up with like You're going to see something different when you see Ohio State receivers this year. I mean, Oregon and everybody else is going to struggle. Nobody's going to cover Jeremiah Smith this year or any other year he's in college football. you got to have chess pieces to kind of match up, at least give you a chance. Size, length, athleticism has nothing to do with Dan and his coaching staff. It's just my player is better, and they got to be able to sell that. So the problem with LSU, oh, they like, he's got a really good relationship with their DB coach. I watched their spring game. If you want to be completely unimpressed, watch LSU secondary. They are terrible. After DJ sees how bad they're going to get smoked this fall, I have a feeling LSU might fall off. That might give Oregon a little better chance. But LSU secondary is awful. Yeah, I, I think LSU upgraded their their defensive staff this offseason for a reason because last year oh they were God. very bad. Like it, it, it was, you know, for Oregon fans that didn't watch any LSU football, they were USC in the SEC. They 100%. Were, That's a they, great like, comparison. Yeah, they, they were scoring a bunch of points. They had a great player, Heisman caliber guy at quarterback. 
and they couldn't stop a nosebleed. Just just could not stop anybody, which is so strange because I think LSU football and you know the the nostalgic part of DBU. me, which yeah, you <laughs> think you think DBU with Tyran Matthew and Patrick Peterson and you know Derek Stingley, but I also think of that nine six win at Alabama oh, in like two thousand ten eleven somewhere in that in, in that range. You know, Brad Brad Wing, I think, was the uh, – not the kicker. He might have been the punter on on that team. But anyway, I think of that, and then I watched LSU's defense last year, and it was just uh, crazy, crazy awful. But there is still another safety name Oregon fans should be aware of. And you should be aware of Game Time if you're trying to get tickets to literally anything. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier easier prices on the game time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch with killer last minute deals all in prices views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying major league baseball tickets you can save up to 60 percent off buying last minute for sports concerts comedy theater etc save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time for whatever you want tickets to download the game time app Create an account. Use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. That's Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, last safety name for the twenty twenty five cycle, Brian. That that Oregon is after is uh, Alex Graham. What can you tell Oregon fans about Graham? He's originally from Detroit, transferred down to IMG before his junior year, recruited by everybody, Michigan, Bama, Georgia, Oregon, uh, Colorado is a team that's trending with him. Every, everybody in the country is recruiting him. Great kid, uh, can really run. Could, another guy that could probably play nickel or could play corner, doesn't matter. Um, that's that's the kind of guy that you're going to, again, if you're going to compete for playoffs, you got to go get these kind of guys. IMG's got like eight DBs that are being recruited, by the way. It's utterly ridiculous. But – He's one of their best, and that also speaks to it. I believe he's the kind of guy that doesn't care about distance and stuff, too. So I think Oregon's got a better chance than a puncher's chance here, and I wouldn't put a lot of stock on where he commits either. Again, like Bama and Georgia, 1M, et cetera. This is a guy everybody's going to continue to recruit. But, I mean, the only prediction on 247 is for Colorado, which I find kind of odd, but you never know with Dion, man. You yeah, you, you know, you can't ever count Dion out for a recruitment, especially when it comes to a defensive back. Like that, that's got to be, you know, his, I would his imagine that's butter. a very good point. Very good. Point. I, yeah, and, uh, although Cormani McLean decided that that was not the place for him, and I, I don't think he's going to, you know, be a consideration for for Oregon, and oh, the Ducks haven't been tied to him at all. So you know, it's recruiting. You just there, there's so many factors in in play, but certainly Dion is not one that can be ruled out. Uh, before we get to the portal, though, I. Just kind of notice something as we were talking about these guys. None of them are from California. And, and and that's been a huge recruiting state for Oregon, of course. But you got a guy from Florida. You got a guy from Ohio. You got a guy from Detroit. Do you think that's, you know, is, is it just the way the recruiting cycle is going and where Oregon's pursuits are at? Or do you think that sort of spreading out at the moment is at all tied to Oregon's arrival or pending arrival in the Big Ten? I think it's a little of both. I mean, things go in cycles, even within one recruiting class. So during a month, you might get two kids from California to commit or big visits. And then you might have four or five kids randomly, Maryland, Georgia, Ohio, whatever it might be. Oregon's the hardest team to follow in recruiting in the country because they recruit so much out of state anyway. And Dan has ties to Missouri, Georgia, Alabama, and some of his staff has ties to other areas of the country too. So I wouldn't worry about that very much. I would look at how good the players are and how balanced their classes are. Oregon's going to be at the top of the Big Ten or whatever it's called now in, in recruiting because they do such a good job. I wouldn't worry about where they're from. Let's talk Cruton in uh, the transfer portal here, which is, of course, a big part of, of talent acquisition nowadays in Oregon. You know, I laid out on yesterday's show what a transfer wish list would look like. You know, a, a starting caliber safety, I, I think – could could serve Oregon well. I think a you know a role player at, at linebacker could work. Maybe a starter on the interior of, of the defensive line. But the guy I want to ask you about is Jacoby Matthews from Texas A and M, who is you know a former five star recruit. Was part of that big Texas A and M recruiting class that that Jimbo Fisher wasn't able to utilize. And 
I, I think that he'd be a good fit at Oregon. I, I think he'd be able to find his way into a starting position that might push out someone who Oregon fans have pegged as as a starter right now. But in your time covering the, the these transfer portal commitments, how do they go down? What 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 is a first contact look like? What is an offer? What is a discussion of it? All, all that sort of stuff. How does it differ from high school recruiting? It's a hundred percent illegal instead of ninety percent illegal. <laughs> That's the answer. This stuff about the kids will get in the portal, then they'll figure it out is 100% false. Mm -hmm. It's all about being illegal with contacting kids and pulling them off rosters. I'm just being completely honest. NCA is a complete and utter joke. So now that that's over with, I'll just talk about the generalities here. This is an elite player. This is a kid that can go wherever he wants. He was a five-star guy. He can run like a deer. He can change drag. He can probably play corner. So that's why. Uh, NIL will play a pet factor in it. Oftentimes there are mediators with that. They may have an agent of some kind. It's, it's wild West. As far as guys like me, once the kids get to college, I mean, the schools hate it when we contact somebody and it doesn't go through the SID or the coaches, but I mean, we can't do our job if we do it because we'd never get any info. It's, it's just depends on who you are and what you're trying to get. You know, you see the certain people like ESPN, CBS, to put out these tweets, they're not getting those randomly. They're talking to people. You know what I mean? So it just depends on the kid who, because sometimes they'll float information to those people because they're trying to direct it. It is, and overall though, the Wild West. Everything is a blow board. It, it's awkward. So th there's the truth about it. I, I wish yeah. I'd be more positive, but there's, there's, there's no, I mean that, there. Hey, that, that's, that's why we bring you on the show. We don't bring you on, on the show to blow smoke. People want to hear what yeah. the situation is, is actually like. And you're, you're either, you're either doing it that way. Or you're falling behind. Those are, th th those are the options. For really. the most part. I mean, sometimes kids will reach out to a school too, just randomly like somebody, especially that's why I talk about relationships. If you miss on a kid and I'm assuming Dan offered this guy out of high school, you've had contact with him. It's better to at least know him and or his coach. Like if he comes from a program that Dan is familiar with or somebody on his staff, better chance. Those things still hold true too. So it's just that none of it is done after they're in the portal. It's all before. They pretty much know where they're going to visit. Yeah, the, the initial report on Matthews was Oregon and Florida State were, were the top two options, but then some other schools – reportedly got got into the mix do you have any idea on kind of where, where he's at and you know whether it's still just Oregon and Florida State I don't know what his list is I don't I don't have any contact with him but I can assure you that it's 20 plus because he's that good right who are at least going to be interested oh yeah that's where the NIL and all that stuff comes in if he went to if he went to A&M he was looking for NIL there ain't any way around it they were they were buying kids left and right everybody knows it so I'm curious if he's worried about that as much now because he's gotten paid a little bit. Now he just like, I just want to have a fit because he's good enough to play in the NFL. If he understands scheme and all that, you can't teach the athleticism to God given ability. So now I'm, I'm curious what his maturity is like to understand, okay, where can I get better? So it doesn't surprise me. Florida state's involved. Sertan's the DB coach. I mean, he's, he's good a DB coach as there is. Sertan is in Pat Sertan, the Broncos star corner. Yeah. Ah, that that's yeah, that's that's solid. Yeah, that's <laughs> not 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 a bad guy to have, but I'm not exactly low on a Oregon's defensive staff. Either, oh no, so. no. I mean, the key here is just get him on campus. Oregon will sell itself or it won't. That's a school either you will or you will not like it because it's so much glitz and all that. Maybe he wants that, maybe he doesn't. But this is a guy that can come in and play. He's gonna change your defense. So Oregon staff again is very good. They get him. I had to find a way to put him at nickel or safety or whatever, however it fits in. He's a good enough athlete. He can fit in wherever they need him. Brian Smith at FB Scout underscore Florida on X, formerly known as Twitter, our locked on recruiting insider here at the network, brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. Brian, great stuff as always. Thank you, sir. Appreciate everyone listening. I'll see you next time. Have a great weekend. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, go Ducks.